Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorshevar. It's the Champions League final. Um, honestly, didn't think we'd be getting here this quickly. Uh, we went through a weird spell where we just looked like we were stagnating, and then we finally got a little bit of progress. And this year, I, I don't know, we just seem to have stepped up. Um, Pereira, I really do think, has been a huge, huge saviour to us, just by giving us a little slightly different extra. Remember, of course, the goals we got against Arsenal were scored by Zviggy and Lisic, so it's not like Pereira saved us in every game, but against Barca, he was the hero for us in that tie. What a legend. Your mental health comes first, dude. Don't worry about us. Well, I do worry about you guys, because I feel like everyone's mental health should be the most important thing to them. And seriously, it's my sort of, uh, every couple of months, I like to remind you, if you're feeling a bit funny, and by that I just mean anything that you might interpret that way, talk to someone um it's incredibly important and talking just really really helps you know get in touch with get reconnect with people perhaps that you maybe don't speak to as much all that sort of stuff it really really does help so yeah that endeth my psa given the sick youth in text you've had could you show us the head of youth development yes um actually i actually got a new one uh, in the summer so maybe that's made us worse i don't know but i think yeah i will totally take you through a little tour now. But our head of youth development is now a guy called Carlos Ranari, who is an Argentinian. I think he's pretty solid. He's got 17 on working with youngsters, decent on these stats here. Uh, not only that, he's got a fairly professional personality, which is something our other guy didn't have. Um, so yeah, he is the new head of youth development. I can't remember who the previous one was, and I don't know if there's a way we can actually find that out. He was a Polish guy, uh, and he's done a bloody good job for us, but I felt we could do with it a tiny bit more of an upgrade. Someone said they also wanted to see our scouting knowledge map. So here is how we're kind of doing right now. Uh, the world, we're at what? 30%? 38% is not bad. Central Europe, we're really good. Scandinavia, not too bad too. So we've got some decent knowledge of a lot of places, particularly Argentina, Serbia, Iceland, Congo as well, because of Yannick Balassi? What? Because he's the manager of Paris FC, and we were obviously their affiliate. I was confused about that. India through East Bengal, um, which is one of our affiliate sides. Lots of lots of European countries. Estonia through affiliate clubs as well. Some decent knowledge of Africa. Amazingly, we've got some knowledge of New Caledonia as well. Um, coming down here, we've got lots of other random countries. Getting there slowly on some of these ones, it would be nice to get more knowledge of the likes of Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, uh, particularly as we scout a lot there. Now, I've heard that there's a way that you can actually improve your scouts knowledge of certain places, and I can't remember how to do it. So I think Fox in the Boxy made a video about this a little while ago, so I'm going to have to go and track that one down, because I think that's quite important. Any idea we can get some custom faces for the likes of Gorosito, Orozco, Freitas, and Franceschi? And of course, when are you replaying your newer faces with uh, WTF's art? Now, so, um, basically, I was waiting for... Laura to do some of the South American looking faces before I put them in because they're not all I was running out of faces to be honest um, but unfortunately Laura's taking a break from making the graphics at the moment and I'm gonna do a load with the ones I've got left in this summer basically so they will all get new faces for the summer the most important players and there's quite a lot of them so I'm gonna do a big batch of them but they might not look as accurate as I would like uh, that is basically the reason for it um so yeah basically I've still got plenty left it's just that they might not be quite as like on the point as I would have quite liked but still we're gonna do a big batch of them and get any kind of important player in this squad is going to get a face in the summer. Do not you worry. Just in terms of finances while we're here, £73 million in the bank. Uh, we've earned back most of the money I spent on Pereira purely by getting through those extra two rounds of the Champions League. It's earned us like another 20-odd million quid. It is phenomenal right now. Um, I have signed up a guy for next season on a free transfer. And I might actually show you him now because why the hell not? This is him. This is Fininho. He plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach. I saw him in my scout report and it said 95% and I was like, Oh boy, four-star striker, 25-year-old Brazilian, not got an international cap, quite important to have that. Um, and I thought, and it said £7 million. So I was like, there's no way this guy's going to go as cheap as £7 million. Turns out his contract's up in the summer, so he didn't cost £7 million. He cost nothing. I think in total with his like compensation packages and stuff, it cost us £2 million out of our transfer budget to bring in Fininho for next season. Dribbling, finishing, first touch, passing technique. He's quick. Uh, he's reasonably tall. He's consistent. Um, a lot of things to like about this young, uh, youngish Brazilian. Um, I felt that for free, now he is going to be on close to £100,000 a week due to the fact that he's a free transfer, but we got the money to make this deal happen and honestly i just didn't see a downside to signing a player like this on a free transfer to really boost our strike force for next year i mean look at this for next season we're going to have Fernino, um grandi Pereira, and zviggy all at the club battling out for striker spots we'll have plenty of options there maybe even move maybe grandi on i don't i don't know and honestly maybe send zviggy out on loan to another one of the polish sides uh maybe one of the other european sides and see what they can do See what he can do there. I, all sorts of options now available to us. But on a free transfer, I couldn't really say no. Um, 
considering the type of value that these kind of players will probably have in Europe, you know? And don't worry, we're going to go through and check the other leagues after this, because I believe Monaco nearly won the uh, uh, league, uh, but unfortunately, I think they were pipped on the final day by the monster that is PSG. Uh, check under your bed before you go to sleep at night. Right, match preview. Oh yeah, one more thing. Off-camera games. Why didn't I even think about that? So we had a 4-0 thrashing of Lech Poston. Uh, Saavedra, Pereira, Lisic, and Garcia. As you can see, though, Abrasin got injured, and he's going to miss the Champions League final. He pulled his hamstring in this game. I was gutted. Then we went and knobbed Katowice 6-0. Pereira with a goal. Two for Triverio. One for Lisic from the spot. Restrepo got one, as did Federico Grande, dicking on Katowice, but they have still come forth. And last but not least, a 2-0 victory over Lecchia. Gorosito in his chat with the goals. Gorosito also missed a penalty. Very quickly, we do actually end up beating our points tally from before with 101 points. We also got 109 goals scored, so that's the best ever. We've won, I think, something like 23 league matches in a row now, uh, which is crazy. It might be 22. The point is, it's a lot. Um, and I'm super pleased with the way that we performed over the second half of the season. Really just took a little while to get going. But once we got there, we got there. Lech in the Champions League. Lechia, Katowice are coming fourth. Finally stepping up to the plate this year. And then Gornet getting in there as well. More stuff on other leagues after. Right now, it's about the Champions League final. This is a weird one. Because normally, when I do a Champions League final episode, if we win... That's, the, that's it. That's the save done. This is the first time that I've ever been in a situation where I know that if we win, we're not done yet. We've got more to stuff to do after this. Um, in fact, that's that's only like objective two or three of this save completed. And then the hard work really begins. We still haven't even got the Poland job. Like, There's so much stuff still to be done um, against... Well, first we've got to beat Thomas Tuchel's Atletico. I still don't know if we're going to be able to do this, but... If we do, it would be a, an absolutely fantastic achievement for us. And I think it would give us a massive boost to everything that we put. I don't know how many coefficient points you get for winning. It has to be a fair amount. So we don't want that tactic. We want standard approach. Classic stuff. Um, yeah. So we'll do a quick pick. So Lisic. Uh, no, we want a Roscoe in the middle. We definitely want a Roscoe in the middle. Yeah, that's what we want. Pereira, Restrepo, Golosito, Lisic. Orozco, Silva, Ivanov, or Chabal? No, I want Chabal today. We're playing this approach. I want him in there. Rosa, Iglesias is... I think he's finally, finally, just about overtaken Ruben Franceschi now. And Rosa will have to play because, obviously, uh, no Alvarezin. So, huge bench available. And that bench is going to be Waterberg, Ivanov, Saavedra, Grande, Falvela, Idshak, Sepe, Pandurovic, Garcia, Treverio, uh, Veras, and, of course, Carroll. Lots of options. Let's see what they're going to do. This guy up top, Columbari, he's the guy that's been doing the damage for them. Uh, basically, um, I think we've just kind of got to go. We, we can't afford to try and pussyfoot our way around this game. We've got to go out and try and impose ourselves on this game and hope for the best, basically. We beat an Atletico before. We beat them 1-0 and did well. Got a bit unfortunate in the second leg against them. Point is, I think we've proven now that we're capable of beating any team in Europe. And I feel like it's only a matter of time before we get the right combination and win ourselves a Champions League. This could be the year. Um, I, don't know. I don't think I've actually ever lost a Champions League final on doing a YouTube save before. I've not won that many either, but we won it with Wimbledon and Portsmouth and Stockport and Red Star. Um, I'm not sure I've actually won any more than that, to be honest, but there is a first for everything. Um, we're in Luzhny we're playing in the Luzhnitsky Stadium in Moscow today. They are going with that system. Interesting. We are the underdogs. It's undeniable, but we just need someone to step up and be an absolute legend for us. Just realised Vigawa isn't on the bench. Oh dear, that's a really silly thing. I just assumed he would be with that many players on there. Right, let's do this. Um, this is this is all on the line now. This could be the biggest moment in the club's history. 120 years into our history, and this is our first ever Champions League final. I want to, oh, and an injury already for Atletico. Very, very important. Possession-wise, we've been very good so far. Lisic's ball in. Freitas is header! Oh my god, the keeper's saved it on the line. I think Pereira gets his foot on that, and somehow the keeper's kept that out. Brilliant. 11 minutes in, we create the first chance of the game. Lisic's ball again. Pereira's headed clear this time. Um, Brilliant. First, not first blood to us, but first chance. There we go, lads. Really, really impressive start. Don't mark this up. Oh, he's gone all the way through and blasts it wide. Okay, possession's coming down. That's understandable. Early possession is very misleading in these games. Poirier clears. Gorosito's got it. Here we go. Breakaway chance. Pereira's waiting. Oh, it's Lisic with the ball. He's going to drive through the middle. He's got options and support. Pereira's in. Can he score? Silver's throw. Oh, no. He's hit the post. Diego Silva, of all people, that was the one guy you didn't want there. If that was anybody else, I think we're in front. 
Uh, we've been excellent so far, though. Really have turned up, and that's what I like to see. We're matching them at least. And, oh, wow, Chabal. Nobody in the box for him at all, though. Can he fire it across? Lee Six header is wide. I don't know where Pereira was that time. Really impressed with our performance so far. We are cutting through them at times, and that's really nice. Don't you dare let them have it. What a clearance. And we might have a chance at the other end. Lisic is just so good at just taking this ball and driving at people. He's gone past two. Slips it around the side for Pereira. Saved by the goalkeeper. Silva. Out wide for Rursa. He's got a great cross on him. This lad ball in. Pereira. Saved by the goalkeeper again. To be perfectly honest, I think we are very, very unfortunate not to be in front in this match. We have been fantastic. We've created so many opportunities. Um... We just need to do this. I feel like if we do another half of this performance and continue to be so good defensively, surely we're going to find a way through. We've just got to dig deep and find something deep inside us. Lisic's been phenomenal. Pereira's been getting into great spots. Chabal has been making wonderful overlapping runs and providing great crosses. We just need some spark of magic. Chabal again. Orozco. Back for Chabal. Men in the box. Don't be offside, lads. Ball in. Poirier? Oh, that's the worst... Okay, one player that would be worse than Silva is Poirier to be in that position. Poirier goes over the top. Pereira's in. Can he finish it? One touch. He's in. Great save again from the goalkeeper. I mean, the chances have been there tonight. We've had them. Poirier's we've just broken the back line so many times. Got to be careful on the substitutions because obviously we've got extra time looming at the moment. Gorosito. Poirier. Restrepo. Oh, just wide. I'm going to make the first sub at like 75 minutes. Chabal. Headed away. Comes back to him. Can he dig a cross out? Men on the edge of the box now. Everybody's back where they, where they should be. Lisek. Heads it wide. Oh, my God. Just to see. Ratinho now. Why is everybody going to... Oh, no. What a tackle. What a goddamn tackle. First actual opportunity they've had where they got him behind. And that tackle, I think it was from Poirier, was an absolute world beater. 12 minutes to go. Nil-nil somehow. I, I don't even know how this is nil-nil. Any other game, we've scored a goal or two. Oh, God. Get out to him. Neeson. Via. Blocked. Blocked. Shabao oh, heads it away. Atletico finally offering some kind of attacking threat in this match here. And Rurs has fouled him. That was silly. They're making changes now. They're bringing on Mata. Pereira's had opportunities and maybe we just need a different a different approach for extra time here, which it looks like is where we're headed here. Yep. Rurs' throw. Treverio. Oh, we could have a shot here. And Restrepo bends it wide. We're going to extra time in the Champions League final. I, I feel a bit... Uh, I don't know. I feel like we should have won this match. We've played brilliantly on the night. And the chances just haven't been going in. Ah, <sighs> But there's still hope. Just going to open up the passing directness a tiny fraction. We, do I think we get a fourth sub, don't we? Yes, we do. I'm going to bring on Ivanov for Shabal. Not because Shabal hasn't been fantastic, but because he is knackered. And I think that that's an area where we're getting down. And hopefully Ivanov can be just as good in that area. 30 minutes now um, before we're going to penalties. And I mean, <sighs> I don't know. I feel like this is one of these games where we've deserved the win. We've been the better side comfortably on the night. Restrepo, he's through. He's going to have to dig out. Oh, he's taking the touch. Waterberg, yes! Inside stop. It's, oh my God. Donny Waterberg, of all people, has come up with what could well be a Champions League winning goal for Polonia Vorshevar. Wonderful from Restrepo. The fact that he doesn't cross this and instead cuts inside, waits for Waterberg, goes on his left foot instead. Waterberg's in there. He's just come onto the pitch and we lead... And we just need to keep playing now. Um, I'm actually going to turn that back down again and let us keep doing what we're doing. Half time and extra time. And as things stand, we will be champions of Europe. Donny Waterberg's goal. But nothing else happened in that entirety of that period. You, you guys might well see an awful lot of this because it is only what I'm you're not going to. I'm not going to cut out as much as I normally do. I want to show you guys as, as much as physically possible. Um... Yeah, this is going to be one hell of a tense 15 minutes of game time, I've got to say. But I feel like on the balance of play tonight, we've deserved this. Gorosito's shot. And it's saved by the goalkeeper. Oh, my goodness. Tw 10 minutes to go. Three minutes to go in the Champions League final. We are currently winning 1-0 thanks to Donny Waterberg. Can we see this out? We've deserved it. Oh, Treverio's got it. Waterberg's in again. Can he square it for someone? He doesn't, but he's won us a corner. One minute left. We're into second half. We're into stoppage time. In extra time. Neeson. We need a big tackle here. Lamar. Block. No, Neeson's through. And he's blazed it over the crossbar. That could well be it. That could be the end. 30 seconds to go in the Champions League final. Iglesias takes it short. Poirier. That is a oh, really good idea. And we've won it. Rurs has got the ball. He's got to just slip it through for someone. He's found Waterbug again. Can he find someone with the cross? He doesn't need to. That's surely going to be it. Right, I'm switching it to 3D. Switching it to 3D. We are taking the corner. And by the time we've taken this, we're into, we've done it. We've surely done it. Gorosito takes it short. Waterberg's got it. 
could go for a shot himself. Poirier! Oh, he's made it too! Ibrahim Poirier. If there's anyone tonight that deserves the goal, it's Ibrahim Poirier. Waterberg with the assist, Poirier with the goal. We've won the Champions League. Come on! Um, that is fantastic. Um, they just they had probably about four players up the pitch. Waterberg rolls it to Poirier. He's bashed it. His fourth goal of the year is a... Well, it's not a Champions League winner, but he's been man of the match tonight and he's thoroughly deserved that. I'm surely... Well, no, not surely. We, why is it only showing one? Is it because I switched the cameras around? Um, surely now we are champions of Europe uh, and we've deserved it on the night. And there we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Celebrating our first ever Champions League win. I mean, I think the turning point in this was I don't even know what the, the turning point was was Pereira against Barcelona. I think we looked dead and buried at 2-0 down in that tie and we've won the Champions League from there. Waterberg and Poirier. Of all the people that were to get the goals, we deserved that win. Poirier, man of the match in the Champions League final. Waterberg comes off the bench, gets a goal, the winner, and an assist for the other one. Um come on. Right then. What do now? It's the first time I've done this and this isn't the end. We've got more stuff. We've got more things to do. We have got we've Got our first ever European title. I can't believe we've gone from... We've never even got to the semis and we've managed to go all the way to win it this year. That is beautiful. We celebrate it. We lift the Champions League title. Everybody loves us. Uh, bonuses, no doubt, loads of those. £17 million for winning it. The fans toast me. The board are ecstatic. We received £900,000 in television revenue. Another £10 million from the coefficient pool. So that's nearly £30 million just for winning that. £95 million in the bank right now. Uh, we are stacked with money, it's fair to say. Come on. Right, coefficients. This is important now. 29 points. It's, it doesn't feel like you get much for winning it, does it? So, that's 39, 42, 46. I'm pretty certain we've actually somehow managed to get less coefficient points this year than we did last year. Yes, we actually managed to get one less. And somehow that equates to that. I don't, I don't know. Point is, we are very, very close now to Portugal and Holland. Um, it is nail-bitingly close. And I think next year, if we have a decent season in Europe, we can overtake them both and get into sixth spot and really start the party. But the thing is, we've won a Champions League title. So if nothing else, we have that to celebrate. Oh my god, right, okay, so firstly, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it this far, please, uh, that would be rather nice, or share it around, show your friends, you know. Anyway, let's look at the other leagues. So in the second tier, which has basically finished now, Motor, Odra in there with Piast, and Skra in the playoffs, who actually came up there. Uh, Lubin came up along with Wodge in the second tier, uh, Rook, Garbania, Legionovia, and Vigri are in those positions, god knows where they finished. Garbania finished three points from the promo finished three points from relegation. Three points from relegation and are in the playoffs to come up. One of these teams is going to end up in the second tier, uh, despite being bottom half in the third tier. GG. Premier League's a bit different this year. You'll notice Southampton have come third. They actually were, they were fourth and they'd wrapped up Champions League. And I was like, damn. And it turns out they've actually come third in the end. Brilliant work from them. Uh, Norwich, Stoke and Borough go down. City win it. Arsenal just in behind there with Southampton coming third in the Premier League. They knocked Bayern out of the Champions League. And also, uh, you might not be able to see it, but I saw it somewhere. Bournemouth have a player called Jackie Collins. <laughs> it's glorious. In La Liga, Barca, the team we knocked out to get to the final, have won it ahead of Real Madrid, Sociedad, Valencia. But then Atletico, the team we just beat in the Champions League final, don't even qualify for it next year. Oh my god. Down go Malaga, Osasuna and Deportivo A Coruña. League uh, uh, Nîmes are playing San Etienne to stay up. Uh, PSG did win the league in the end by a single point. They did lose five times though and were basically second for as long as I can remember. Lyon getting in there as well in the Champions League. Marseille, Nice and Montpellier. Down go Dijon, Angers and probably Saint Etienne, but we'll see. Fortuna Dusseldorf are either being promoted or not going down from the Bundesliga. Bayern won it. Huge shock. Leipzig, Schalke, Dortmund in there. Leverkusen, Frankfurt and Hertha Berlin into the uh, Europa League spots. And Heidenheim. Oh no, so they, Dusseldorf are coming up. Nice for them. Heidenheim go down along with Hamburg and Köln, who have had a really bad season. Jesus. Over in Italy, Inter have won back their crown. Uh, finishing ahead of Juve this time. Milan, um, Atalanta and Lazio in Europe as well. Ro had a better season than last year, it's fair to say. No huge surprises in there. Parma, Verona and Foggia Calcio are down. Oh, seven points. Oof, that is bad. And lastly, but not leastly, in the Eredivisie, Knack have won, I believe, the right to go into the uh, Europa League next season. Um, let me just check this. Ajax win, PSV second, RZ third, Feyenoord fourth. Normal service resumed in uh, the Netherlands, which is a shame because I was kind of hoping they'd slack a bit more. You might notice, though, that Utrecht, they qualified for the Europa League, but came 13th. And at one point, they were very nearly getting relegated despite coming second last year. Volendam go down, along with Sparta, Rotterdam and Groningen probably in trouble as well. Wow. Um, so there we have it. What a season in total. How many games did we actually lose? We lost away at Barcelona, away at Monaco, and away at PSG. 
three matches lost in the entire season, all of which were away in the Champions League. No home defeats in any competition this season. We're unbeaten in two consecutive years in the league as well. And our last home defeat in, I, I don't know. Point is, we are champions of Europe. And I don't know, this has come out of nowhere. To be, well, not, not out of nowhere, but I do really think that it's given us a huge platform with which to build on for next year. And our reputation boost is definitely going to help us attract better players too. I don't even know where to go from here. What can we, we've won the Champions League. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, drop a like. That'd be a magnificent. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. And of course, next season, we've got to start pushing as we want to get Poland up that order. And we've got a lot of money to spend in the transfer window. So that is going to be damn interesting. We've got an uh, analysis video coming up later today. And then, of course, tomorrow, the first time I've ever done this, a transfer window after winning the Champions League. This is going to be interesting. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.